Hello, my name is Ryan Higby, and I am going to try to answer this question. When can we incorporate concepts into our teaching practice? The first example that I would like to give comes from the written curriculum, concept-based curriculum. I was working with a group of fifth grade teachers, and they were writing an American Revolution unit. They started with 17 social studies benchmarks that came from citizenship and government and history. And here I have them listed. From those benchmarks, they went through an exercise where they were able to identify concepts within the benchmarks by asking themselves, why are we teaching this? And then they came up with statements that started with, so that the student understands that. And they came up with these long list of, of concept statements. They knew, though, that that was still too much uh, for the students to be able to dig into at the depth that they wanted the students to go. So then they sorted those concept statements into big ideas, into concepts. So the concepts of cause and effect, change, perspective, and organization. To be able to dig into those ideas, they identified three areas then that they wanted to give students the opportunity to explore. They wanted them to explore different perspectives during a specific period of time. They wanted the students to think about the relationship between events and their effects. And also they wanted their students to think about the organization of a democracy. By doing that, they wanted students to understand this really big idea um, what Wiggins and McTie might call an enduring understanding, that voicing perspective stimulates change. Here's another example about ways that we can work concepts into, into our teaching, and this example is specific to instruction. So you've already written your concept-based curriculum, and now you're delivering it in front of a group of students. Here is uh, five, five steps you might call them the, the outline of a lesson plan that I have kind of settled on whenever I try to go in and teach concepts. And so I'm going to work through these steps and provide an example that I taught to a group of fifth graders. First, you want to start with the concept. And then you want to identify this to students. You can either share the concept statement with students or maybe ask a question that gets students thinking about this big idea. I wanted students to understand that there is a connection between decisions and the impacts that those decisions have. And it was based on these three benchmarks that came from the social studies standards and then also from the English language arts standards. Once you've identified that big, timeless, abstract, universal, and transferable idea, then you need to pick a concrete example in which students can explore so that they can make meaning of that big idea. And I wanted them to think about Nelson Mandela and the decisions that he made and the impacts that they had on his life and also the people that lived in South Africa during apartheid. I knew that students didn't know a lot about Nelson Mandela and apartheid, and so I first started with the pre-assessment to figure out what students knew, and then I needed to build background knowledge, and I showed them first a timeline. I showed it bigger than that. And then also uh, just a very, very short YouTube video about apartheid that was appropriate for fifth graders, explaining what apartheid was, when it was, what was happening um, around that period of time in South Africa. Then I read the picture book by Kadir Nelson called Nelson Mandela as a way for students to further explore Nelson Mandela's decisions and the impacts that they had. And I made um, them create a timeline, or a, this is really a flow chart, of the decisions and the impacts that they had. So first we talked about how Nelson Mandela's parents decided to send him to school, and then based on that decision, his mom decided to send him to the chief. Then he decided to become a lawyer because of that schooling that he had, and so on and so forth, until eventually Nelson Mandela decided to run for, for president all the way at the end of the text. 
In order to meet that economics benchmark where students needed to be able to identify a historical choice and then think of alternative choices that could have been made, I had them take their flow map and then adapt it to be able to, to see how history would have been changed had Nelson Mandela made an alternative choice at any point during his life. Here's one of the examples from a student. Um, in fact, this student completely redid the whole timeline and said the first decision was one that would have been changed, so the parents decided to not send Nelson Mandela to school, and then thought about all the different ways that Mandela's life and the life of South Africans would have changed based on that one decision being different. Here are a couple of other examples. You'll notice by the piece of tape, this student kept the two decisions that were originally on the flow map and then changed the rest of the map. Here's another example. And you'll notice that this student is, is realizing that if a decision would have been different, then apartheid would have continued. It would have had an, a, a major impact on the life of South Africans. Then, in um, concept-based teaching, I want to be able to check for students' understanding of that concept. So not the specific knowledge I've been teaching them about Nelson Mandela, but rather, do they understand that choices have an impact? And so I gave them this prompt and, and talked about the importance of nightly reading, and then allowed the students to answer either in a flow map, which was the format that they were used to, or in paragraph form. So this child is telling me they didn't understand the concept because, no, they don't need to continue to read every night because they could just read stop signs and everyday things. This student, though, is starting to realize that her decision now will have an impact in the future. Reading now will impact her learning for a long time. This child also understands that decisions can have impacts. Even though I'm not asking them about Nelson Mandela and his decisions, they're able to transfer their understanding of the concept. Finally, I would reflect on students' thinking to be able to decide what your next steps are. And in this specific lesson, I was really impressed with the students' overall ability to transfer their understanding from the context in which I taught the concept to a different context altogether. And if you want to read more about my reflections on that lesson, check out that blog post. The next steps for this class would have been to pick another specific concrete example that illustrated the idea that choices have impacts. But I might have students pick the example that they want to dig into, that engages them, and that's relevant in their lives and then give them opportunities to explore that example so that they can continue to construct understanding of the idea that choices and decisions have impacts. The last example I'd like to show is from assessment, concept-based assessment. I, again, I was working with a group of fifth grade teachers, and their summative assessment for the end of the unit um, is what I'll be showing today. The big idea for the unit was that expansion transforms culture over time. And this unit addresses these social studies history standards about the cultures in America before European exploration, um, the motivation for Europeans to explore and settle in Asia, Africa, and the Americas, and then also the early interactions between those um, Europeans, indigenous people, and Africans. So even though the teachers focused on these three uh, pretty locked in time and place facts, uh, the knowledge, they wanted to see if their students could transfer the big idea of that expansion can transform cultures to a different context. So for their summative, they have the students pick a culture, any culture, and they use the, the definition of culture very abstractly. And then the students have to explain the impact that that expansion of that particular culture has had on life around that particular uh, thing expanding. 
Here is an example of different cultures that have been changed um, that fifth graders have used. They have written about um, the new expansion of Highway 52 in St. Paul, Minnesota. They have um, talked about new babies coming into a family and that family unit expanding and how that has transformed the culture of the family. They have even um, thought about uh, the different sports stadiums and the ways that though that expansion has impacted um, downtown in Minneapolis. So again, I was trying to answer the question, when can we incorporate concepts into our teaching practice? And my answer would be, we can incorporate concepts into all areas of our teaching and learning, curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Even though I feel like I've learned a lot about concept-based teaching and learning, I want to continue to learn. And so I want to tell you a little bit about what my future learning holds. First, I want to learn a little bit more about how the structure of knowledge, which comes out of Lynn Erickson's work, fits with the structure of process, which comes out of Lois Lanning's work. And they talk about that all in their book that they wrote together called Transitioning to a Concept-Based Curriculum and Instruction. And I also would like to dig a little bit into the book Future Wise by David Perkins, where he talks about curriculum um, that, that has legs, curriculum that takes students somewhere. Thank you for listening today. If you have any feedback or questions for me, I, I welcome both. My email is listed there, or you could tweet me, or visit my blog to learn more about what I'm doing with teaching and learning with concepts.